It is the final show of 2021. We're going to talk about goal setting and getting you ready for 2022. But we begin tonight with a conversation with our police chief. Roll it, Ed. We have had a record year with violence in the capital city, but that's really no different than what we have seen around the country. Violent crime is up. Believe it or not, other kinds of crime happen to be down. So let's get into that with the chief of the Baton Rouge Police Department, Murphy Paul, who is here with us in studio. Chief, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going all right. You know, uh, preparing for the new year. Well, this and, uh, year, as I referenced in the open, has been a record year for violence in Baton Rouge. These spikes have happened across the country yeah. as well. So let's talk about it. What has contributed the most to the violence we've seen in our city? Well, I think we have a, a, a series of, of things. You know, when we look at overall crime is going to be down. We're seeing a violent crime, specifically homicides and shooting incidents are up. Mm -hmm. uh, Thirty percent on a national average. Uh, right now, we're right around 14 uh, a percent, uh, and we've been averaging that uh, as of lately. Um, uh, over 20 percent of our homicides are domestic violence, and that's just the homicides. That's not all of the incidents. So we see this this increase in domestic violence. Uh, we're seeing uh, closer relationships between suspects and victims. Uh, amenities, uh, homicides, uh, the drug nexus. Now, those where we can show in motive. Uh, it's uh, arguments or disagreements uh, uh, that are the leading um, uh, motive in, in those cases and, and group violence. You yeah. know, we have, uh, unfortunately, a young uh, a, a group of, of, of young folks uh, uh, who are involved in group and gang violence that's also uh, fueling some of the, uh, uh, the violent incidents that we've seen here in Baton Rouge. You know, people turn on the evening news, they wake up in the morning mm -hmm. and pop tune in on and they want to know what's happening yeah. in the city and one of the first things they see is that there has been another shooting and and it has been rampant and for the person on the outside looking in it doesn't look like anything is happening to address it yep. and and I know you hear that all the time I know you speak with groups and they talk to you like they don't see anything happening to curb the violence what is your response to that yeah so let's look at it. in 2018 2019 we saw two consecutive years not only uh, of reductions in in overall crime but homicides were down in those two years uh, I think 2020, when we talk about the challenges that the pandemic presented in communities all across America, I think we have to really look at the, the systems that are in place that are designed to reduce crime, mm -hmm. right? Uh, courtrooms were closed during the pandemic. So uh, the accountability piece, what is accountability? I think accountability? the mic is rubbing a little bit. I can almost hear Ed having a heart attack I'm, and master I'm, control. Uh, Go ahead, sorry. no, you were talking about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the accountability piece, what is the accountability piece? The accountability piece is when a crime happens, uh, we make an arrest, uh, and then that person is held accountable. Yeah. So we're starting to see that uh, a lot of the offenders that we're dealing with, right, mm -hmm. we've dealt with them before, yeah. right, time and time again. That's right. what I hear from my police officers. So we have to do a better job in that accountability piece, okay? So they need to be held accountable. Yeah for the crimes that they've already been arrested for. So let's drill down on that. Yeah. You, you and myself and Julio were talking before we started the show about the, num the backlog of people that the department has arrested. And then in your time as chief, there have been a number of people that you have seen come through multiple times. So how do we close that gap in the, in the fence? Well, you know, we're having the conversations. I know my staff and I are meeting with uh, leaders uh, in the 19 JDC to talk about our concerns. I've had these conversations uh, with our district attorney, uh, identifying those gaps in the systems and what we can do. Look, um, there, are, there are some people, a small group, let me be clear about that. There's a small group of people that's responsible for the violent crime, but we cannot continue to allow those individuals who are involved in shootings. I'm going to stick with the shootings and the homicides mm -hmm. uh, that we arrest to get out of jail again and again and again. Because let me tell you what that does. It, 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 it not only interferes in that accountability piece because they wasn't held accountable for the crimes that they were committed, the violent crime, 
but it also brings a, a challenge in the community. When the community see these individuals get out of jail and, and, and out of jail again, then it, it's difficult to get them to come and be witness and testify against these individuals. Look, we need the community to put the bad actors in jail. So when they don't see the accountability piece, uh, they lose confidence in us and, and, and our ability to do our job. And then there's also this fear, right? This well, fear of testifying. Well, hold that mm -hmm. thought. We're going to take a quick break and come back and continue with you as we talk with Chief Paul about the violence in our community and what's the department doing to address it and what's on the horizon for 2022. Back in a moment. Coming up, we'll have a conversation with Julio Malera with the Baton Rouge Business Report about setting goals for the new year. A very motivated and inspirational person. I can't wait to have that conversation. But right now, we're still yep. talking with Baton Rouge Police Chief Murphy Paul about the crime here in our community. And going into break, you were referencing the system and how this, there, there is this gap in the system. And, and some of these guys are either being held in prison and not going to trial or they're getting out so quickly. So. What is the working relationship that you have with the judges and the district attorney's office to try to make certain that justice is served for both both sides of this equation? Yeah, I can say we've already seen some some improvements in that area. You know, I, I, I talked to uh, a healer about it and I can tell you uh, without giving very specifics, we've had uh, a couple of incidents as of recently where we made some um, 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 arrests. Uh, that we believe are, are, are going to generate um, some closures and, and to see the communication now between the district attorney's office, our investigators, making sure we get out ahead uh, and, and giving all that information to the judges so they cannot get out on bond. And that's the whole uh, issue. You know, when we have individuals involved in violent crime, and they continue to make bond and continue their felonious behavior. Look, that's just not acceptable and that is not accountability. So we're seeing some wins in that. Um, Hiller uh, and his office have identified uh, some areas of improvement that we all can approve on. Uh, we have a meeting uh, in the first week of January uh, with our judges as well to see uh, how we can continue to build on this relationship and hold those individuals who are involved in shooting incidents mm -hmm. and group violence accountable in the city of Baton Rouge. So I said this in the open, and it's kind of hard for people to believe, but it is the truth that 
crime overall in the country in the last two years has gone down. Mm -hmm. uh, thefts, you know, burglaries, things like that. Violent crime has gone up, right? So to what do you attribute the drop in overall crime, but the uptick in violent crime? Well, look, when we look at community gun violence, right, it's been studied and examined for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in over 30 years, the question is, can police play uh, a role uh, in reducing community gun violence? The answer to that is yes. How? The second is, can they do it alone? Okay. And the answer is no, All right. we can't. Uh, we've showed that these strategies do work. We know they worked uh, two years prior to that. I think we really have to look at uh, the, the, how complex crime is, right? That the crime is really, uh, there's no uh, a one way to address crime, right? Every community has its own challenges and issues. For us, we know that uh, getting those numbers up, right? Recruitment and retention is so important. We've been fortunate to continue to have a police academy. So we got 31 highly motivated young folks in our academy now. We know that the more boots on the ground, the more police officers we have, then those proactive things that we have in our strategic plans uh, are better achieved with visibility, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, more police officers out there to investigate uh, violent crimes. Uh, so we know that not only police-led initiatives, but community-led initiatives as well. Uh, and that's the piece that we really have to get in. You know, when I look at uh, when I speak to young folks, and I'm going to say this, I speak to young folks. One of the things I ask young folks when I go to schools, when I go to community events, I say, by a show of hands, how many of you have seen someone in your classroom or someone your age on social media where they displayed a weapon, a gun, or where they were feuding with someone? Okay. About half the kids raised their hands. And then I do a follow-up question. I say, now, how many of you told a concerned adult? How many of you told your parents or a teacher? The hands go down. And then I ask the kids, well, why? And they say, because I'm not a snitch. A snitches get stitches. Is that where we're at in our community where we are telling our kids a lot? Back when I worked drugs, and back in the, uh, the mid-'90s, uh, when two individuals were involved, two or more, in a criminal enterprise, a gang, a group, of drugs, and one person gets caught, and that person tells on the other, he or she was referred to as a snitch or as a rat, if you understand organized crime from mm -hmm. uh, many years ago. We've taken that terminology, and now we apply it to good law-abiding citizens. We have to stop telling that lie in our community. We have to stop telling that lie. We have to get involved. We have to cooperate with law enforcement. We have to pick up the phone. When you see something, you say something. And we need to start putting these bad actors in jail as a community and holding them accountable. And we have to continue doing our part so that the community feels safe to pick up that phone and do that. And I can tell you, Clay, I am getting calls, brother. Mm -hmm. I'm getting text messages from community folks who said they're, they're tired and they're sending information, very uh, valuable information that is leading uh, to some very good cases that we're building against those bad actors in this community. Well, I know that you and the men and women of the department are working very hard to address what's happening in our community, and I know people don't say it enough, and, you know, we've worked together. People don't say it enough, but we appreciate what you guys are doing, and thank you so much, Chief. Happy New Year to you, brother. Yeah, thank you for having me, and uh, Happy New Year to everybody, and uh, uh, when you see one of our officers out there, please uh, tell them, look, we we got some great police officers. I'll tell you, it's our chief. Our Going to break. A working for
Well, the chief was still talking uh, as Julio came to the desk here, but no, we appreciate <laughs> Chief Paul for being in with us. Julio Malera is the man behind the Baton Rouge Business Report. Been a friend of mine for a very long time. Always, always motivated. And you got a lot of new things on the horizon. You started the year, 21st Century Business Forum. It's been a success. Glad to work with you on that. People don't realize how hard you work on that. And now this new transition with the business report. So you you certainly don't have a whole lot going on this year, do you? <laughs> Let's talk about it, man. Yeah, well, uh, look, it's exciting. I mean, a lot of uh, great things are happening around our, our, our region, even though we only hear a lot of the negative stuff going on. But, uh, you know, I'm excited. Uh, we're getting ready to make a, a big transition. You know, Rolf announced uh, his retirement, and uh, I'm in a fortunate position to be able to uh, buy him out. We've been approached by a couple of national firms, but we wanted to keep it local. Mm -hmm. We have a great team, and, and uh, the, you know, there's something about keeping things local. And so uh, we, we're, we're all geared up for the new year. I know you are. So people have heard me talk about the 21st Century Business Forum, and people are signing up. What is it for someone who's not heard about Sure, this? absolutely. Well, it's a monthly webcast uh, nationally where we bring the top thought leaders and business minds in America, and we bring them here locally to the Baton Rouge region. And what we wanted to do, you know, we're living in, in, in times of unprecedented uh, c uh, c competitive stress. Uh, there's so much disruption, regardless of your industry. You could be in healthcare, real estate, banking, finance, technology. So th there's a lot of uh, disruption. So this is a time where entrepreneurs, C-suite, rising managers uh, need ideas and insights and concepts and even inspiration and some education uh, to help them lead their organizations. And so uh, we, last year we kicked off with uh, an iconic name in Steve Forbes. We've had uh, Nick Saban, Patrick Lanchoni, the uh, organizational a health pioneer, uh, and I'm excited uh, because, uh, as you know, we're kicking off the uh, January episode with Drew Brees, and oh, uh, yeah. and you did that great interview with him, and it's just been great insights uh, for people. Uh, we're in 20 markets around the country, from yep. Fresno, California, down to North Carolina, to Vermont, uh, Little Rock, uh, and um, so it, it's been, um, it's one of those ideas that came out of COVID, just to help people uh, in the era of COVID and so uh, that's taken off. So if you haven't signed up for it, you need to sign up for the 21st Century Business Forum. Now let's talk about 2022. A lot of people are in their reflective phase right now, thinking about this last year and gearing up for the new year. If a CEO or just the average person is wondering how do they kickstart themselves for yeah. the new year, what advice would you give them? Well, you know, first of all, what's so important is that the data has not changed in the last 30 years, and that is, Clay, that uh, less than 3% of people in America have goals, mm. right? And so people wonder why they're not living the aspirations and the dreams and the outcomes that they're looking for, whether it be in their personal life or business life. And the science is very clear. You gotta write it down first so that something locks in, it clicks in mentally uh, that will, will help the process. It's only the beginning, but if you don't write it down, then it's just a wish, right? And so when you begin to write things down, uh, and again, there are a bunch of different concepts on this, but uh, I think it's important to hone in. Even those 3% that actually write goals down, of those 3%, only 8% actually achieve. And the reason why, is, and look, and there are a bunch of different acronyms, there are a bunch of different uh, flows for goals, but I, I still like you know the smart one, right? You wanna make sure that your goals are specific, mm -hmm. right? You wanna make sure that they're measurable, right? You wanna make sure that they're attainable, right? Uh, they gotta have a deadline, right? You gotta have, you, you gotta be specific. And I think again, you know, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head just now. This is a great time for people to reflect to think about possibilities, right? Uh, to, to bring hope and vision. What do I wanna be? Where do I wanna go? What do I wanna do? What do I wanna share, right? This is, it's a great time to recalibrate. I love this time of the year. And I think that, you know, there are a couple of different areas. You know, most people think, when they think about goals, they just think about work, right? Which is very important. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just as important to make sure that you've got uh, some spiritual goals, and because that's about your purpose, volunteering, giving back, making a difference. Uh, your financial goals, right? You gotta be financially uh, healthy. How about physical and health related? Because again, if you're sick, or if you're fighting a disease, it's very difficult to do your best. Mm -hmm. So we, we, you, you gotta make sure you have a plan for your health life. Uh, intellectual, uh, intellectually, you know, uh, if you would just read one book 
one nonfiction book a month, you'll be in the top 3% of America. So if you're looking to get an edge, and, and look, um, it could be a podcast, but you got to have a plan for growth, whether you're 29, 49, 69, or 89. One thing I learned from the great legendary coach, John Wooden, uh, he's the one that told me at 95 years old, you can never exhaust your capacity to grow and learn. It's something you can do to the day you go to the grave. And if you're going to leave your full potential, you got to have goals that are going to continue to stretch you and help you maximize your full potential. What about guarding your circle? your circle of influence, the people around you on a regular Oh basis. yeah, well that's huge, right? Because your environment and your friendships tell me about who you're gonna be in the future, right? And so, you know, um, as you know, I've written a couple of books, but- well, uh, Hank, hold your thoughts, okay. we'll come back and we'll let Julio pick it up right there. And the great John Gray has a treat for you. Stay right where you are, back in a moment. So I know you've been leaning in, really wanting to hear what Julio is gonna say about your circle of influence, your friends. I think it is the most important thing you can do for yourself. Choose the people you give your time to. Let's talk about that. Well, you know, uh, in, in my second book, uh, I, I wrote about that exact uh, same concept because there's four types of people in our lives. There are those that add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And I think that even as uh, the new year begins and we're evaluating our goals and where we're going, we gotta think about those people that add and multiply to our lives mm -hmm. and think about those that subtract and divide. And let me tell you what I mean by that. We have got to get closer to people that are gonna add and multiply to our lives, those that encourage, those that affirm, those that even correct, coach, mm -hmm. those that pray for us, those that just bring energy to our lives. And it's our responsibility to get away from people that subtract and divide, people that suck the life out of you, right? <laughs> people that are negative, people that are cynics, right? And I think, uh, again, um, look, even within my own family, they know, man, yeah. I don't tolerate too much negativity. The world is full of negativity already. You don't need to have those people around you, right? And I'm not talking about Pollyanna positivity, no, right? No, I'm no. talking about about people that actually are going places, people that want to see you grow and, and, and flourish in life, right? right, and, right. And, and, and a lot of people are just not aware of that. How can people find, you've got a minute here, but how can people find you on social media? And I highly recommend that they do. How can they find you? Well, probably the easiest way to just go to juliomalara.com or at juliomalara. Um, in there, uh, they'll go straight to my site and you can find uh, my, my social media handles, but you can also find you know, some of the resources there you know, that hopefully can help you because that's really my passion. I love to see our community, our people uh, to flourish. 
and sign up for the 21st Century Business Forum. Now, you know the gentleman who's on the set with oh, me Oh, man, over the here. one of a kind. <laughs> John Gray. The man. Who's here with us today as uh, this, this show is airing on New Year's Eve, and he's got a special treat. This is a classic old Lang Syne. John, take it away. Well, right. <laughs> so listen, how long do I have, Ed? How long do I? 30 seconds. Main goal for Julio Malera in 2022. Main goal for uh, me is going to be to, um, golly, uh, you really caught me there with, with uh, uh, to be a better dad, to be a better uh, husband, to be a better leader, and to make a difference as best I can, a positive difference in our community. That's my goal. Man. This has been a blast this year, being with you guys every Friday and Saturday. I wish the best of blessings to all of you and your family. Stay safe. 2022 is going to be ours. Let's go get it. Have a safe New Year holiday. The best is yet to come. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>